myself around the world. Now, you might think before we even begin, there's something a bit suspicious about the very idea because, you know, people are people as we as we know, and people are the people uh, all around the world. So, you know, when everyone kind of suggests that, you know, the self means completely different things in, in different cultures, there's We've got reasons to be suspicious. If you've travelled and you've been to East Asia, for example, you may have met someone there, and you know you, you, it's like there are recognisably human beings like yourself. So, so what's the difference? I think there are differences in how both cultures and philosophies conceive of the self, and these things are very interestingly related. Um, I should say the background to this. The reason I'm talking about it is I wrote a book on. Uh, global philosophy and of course it's a huge subject so I couldn't attempt to become an expert on this and then write the book I think there's no one in the world is an expert on all the world's philosophies so I approached it kind of like a philosophical journalist in the sense that I spoke to a lot of experts in fields and then tried to synthesize it and bring it together and originally my idea was I was just interested in philosophy but then the question arose in my mind, which is, if, you've, if you learn something about the philosophical tradition of a culture, do you learn anything about that culture itself, as it is today? And the experts I spoke to all unanimously said that was true. And I think this is right. So when I talk about the philosophy of the self, I'm talking not just about the philosophy of the self, I'm thinking about how concepts of self function in uh, non-Western cultures. Now. Going back to my sceptical point though, aren't people people everywhere around the world? This is true. There's this guy, Tom Kasulis, a comparative philosopher who works on Japanese philosophy. And he said one of the single most useful things that I read um, when I was researching this book. He said, the problem is when people talk about East, West, etc., etc., they too often kind of say, you know, in the East they do this, in the West they do that, as though it was like an either or binary kind of choice. And he says that's the wrong way of looking at it. The right way of looking at it is, and this is pretty much a, uh, only a slight paraphrase, is that what's foreground in one culture is background in another and vice versa. So it is true that everywhere around the world, human beings are human beings, <laughs> selves have certain aspects, but in different cultures and also in different philosophies, different aspects of these selves are given greater emphasis and some are given less emphasis. And that actually does affect the way we feel about ourselves and the way we relate to others. Now, of course, there are lots of fine-grained differences all around the world. All I'm going to try and set out in this short talk today is what the sort of a core difference is in the sense of uh, core difference between what gets emphasised in uh, the Western cultures and what gets emphasised. Actually, I'd say pretty much all non-Western cultures, but I'm only going to talk really about East Asia and in particular Japan. So let's start off by <coughs> taking the stereotype of uh, the self in Japan. This is a, a famous shopping district in Japan where there's this famous pedestrian crossing. And, you know, from a vantage point like this, what you see is you see huge masses of people waiting for the lights to change. The lights then change and then there's this huge crossing of people but very, very orderly, very organized. It looks like kind of, you know, ants, insects, herds. These, be alert, these are actually slightly dehumanizing words. So um, I am aware of that. And people see pictures of this. They also see pictures of people on the famously overcrowded Tokyo mm -hmm. underground, again, people <coughs> going on en masse. And the impression I think people get is that this, these are kind of conformist cultures in which it's all about the group and it's not about the individual. And it's about the absence of individuality. Basically, people subsume their identity into that of the group and conform and go along with things. I want to try and explain this by giving a concrete example. I, I've been reading about concepts of self and understandings of self in Japan, and I speak to Japanese philosophers and I was leaving Japan on a plane and I noticed that a lot of the passengers were Japanese and a lot of them had selected the same in-flight movie, right? Which I didn't recognize. So I thought, this is interesting. What, what is this film everyone's watching? I'll, I'll watch it too. And I'm really glad I did because in this film, it kind of made concrete to me what was going on 
with these concepts of self in the films. So this film was called Orange. It was in its opening weekend the number one in the box office in Japan. It was based on a manga and it was a teen romance, a teenage romance, okay? Um, but it, it certainly was very importantly different from most uh, Western teenage romances, particularly Hollywood ones. Not only because the plot involves two suicides, which uh, is suicide doesn't tend to feature a lot in teenage romances in in, in Western traditions. Um, but it, that was that was only that wasn't actually the, the most interesting difference. The most interesting difference was this: that here we have uh, a, a picture, a scene from the film, and the, you can't see the point of it. These two, this is the sort of the love interest. This couple, um, it's a story about them, but it. But these two people, the, the people who, you know, the film is all about them getting together in many respects, they're only seen alone in the film twice. Well, I think it's twice, you know, I wasn't counting exactly, but it's a, a handful of times. Now, it's not because there's a taboo. You might think, well, in some cultures there are taboos against showing young people alone, sexually dangerous. No, they were shown alone, but they weren't shown alone a lot. Now, why not? And the answer was that the whole development of this plot was showing how this relationship between the, the, the key couple was only, only kind of could emerge and made sense within the relationship of the whole friendship group, right? The couple weren't isolated from the broader social group. If you think about most romantic films that you see in, in coming out of Britain and America, and even I think, you know, continental Europe too, um, What's quite striking about them is that so often, you, you, so much of the time it's focused on just this couple, it's almost like there isn't a world outside, you know. Um, you, there, there tend to be a typical scene where they will meet a friend over coffee to talk about something very, very briefly, but this friend then sort of disappears or something. There's such a focus on, on the, the couple. In this film, it's not like that at all. The couple only exists in a context of a relationship. In this scene, the kind of dependency is made... Um, heavy-handedly because um, they, they are carrying the crash mat for a school sports day and their friends emerge and they say we'll help you carry the load and this is kind of metaphorical so there's clearly a kind of message being put over here it, I mean, it goes really deeper than that this has a very complicated plot involving time travel okay and um, <laughs> really yeah, yeah and what happens is this boy he's new from the area he comes to the school and he's troubled and his mother kills himself, she can't cope, and then he kills himself, right? And, that, and, and this is what has happened. This girl grows up, she marries, I think, uh, him, and they have a child, and they're very happy, right? I mean, I'm reconstructing the timeline a bit more linearly than the film, but that's what happens. But somehow, unexplained in the film, as adults, they discover a way of sending a message back in time, which has the opportunity to open up an alternate future in which something else happens, right? Now, there are two really important things about this. The first thing is that having discovered this, these, these kids, they, they feel deeply responsible for the death of this boy. It was a suicide, he killed himself. But they kind of recognize that that suicide was partly their failure too, right? And that's really, really clear and evident. And, and, and again, that's, that's a feeling that certainly people can have in Western cultures that we, we talk about how we let people down, suicides, etc., etc. But I don't think we perhaps feel it as strongly in cultures where the interrelations between people have more emphasis. In here, it's a very obvious thing to them. The boy killed himself, that means there was a failure of the group. That's one of the reasons why they're so keen to rectify it. But the other interesting point is, of course, if they succeed in keeping this boy alive, right, then he's not gonna go and, and, and she's not gonna end up marrying him, she's gonna marry him. So, but the husband goes along with this. The husband conspires in the plot, which makes sure that his wife, in an alternate future, gets a better partner than him. Now that is a very kind of social way of thinking about relations, right? Now I thought this, this film was, was, was brilliant. It really kind of did show, again, it's about, I said earlier about the foreground background thing. The foregrounding in, in the Western culture is the individual, and in a romance, it's the couple. It's the small, the small units, the discrete units, the separate units. In here, there are individual characters. The story is about them, but everything always takes place and only makes sense within the broader connections people have with each other. 
And one of the important things to note about this is, this is, does not suggest the lack of individuality. The slide I showed at the beginning, I think the stereotype is, is conformity, uniformity, people being the same. Actually, it's very evident in this film that is absolutely not the case. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.